And so I'm going to get the view from the opinion pages of the papers. Um, let's start with The Guardian today. Um, Steve Bell there. Imagining the Prime Minister on a Belfast mural, apparently riding Arlene Foster, depicted as an orange space hopper. Uh, I'll bet Irish eyes are frowning this morning at the sun. Get Real Leo is the headline above its editorial column. Accusing the Irish Prime Minister of a suicidal failure of statesmanship. And that beside a column from its former political editor, Trevor Kavanagh, who describes the backstop as a voodoo spell to bewitch and befuddle the feeble-minded. Uh, lest we forget, that's the commitment to keep the same rules on both sides of the Irish border so that trade can flow. The European Parliament's Brexit coordinator, Guy Verhofstadt, off offers, well, an opposite view in The Guardian, saying the EU won't be intimidated. Elisha Hanlon argues in The Telegraph that even if exiting the EU is a disaster, Irish unity is not inevitable, and Scottish independence isn't a shoe in either. Meanwhile, in the mail, Dominic Sandbrook opines that the plunging pound is nothing to celebrate. It means we'll pay more for sun hats and lollies on holiday, fruit and veg in the supermarket, and appliances on the high street. Uh, of course, plenty of politics in the United States as well. The Democrats have begun the process of choosing a candidate for the next presidential election. Uh, but David Simmons suggests that the big winner so far is the man on the right, Donald Trump. Uh, well, with us today to look through all of those, the political journalist and consultant, Emma Brunel, and the political strategist, Ed Rennie. Morning, guys. Good How morning. are you? Very well, I hope. Yeah. Um, Shall we start uh, with that Steve Bell uh, cartoon in The Guardian? It's having a bit of a run at the moment, Steve. Um, this showing the Prime Minister on a Belfast mural, um, apparently riding a big orange Arlene Foster. It's a bit cheeky, Steve, this morning, I think. Well, you say Steve Bell's been on a run. I think he's been on a run his entire career. I mean, I've always laughed at his cartoons, uh, whether the, the, the target is left or right. I mean, they're always, they always get a giggle um, when you see them. And uh, yeah, I think the important thing is that, you know, Boris is completely dependent on the DUP for his majority. That's the reality. And Steve Bell's just found an incredibly amusing way of pointing that out. Nice touch, making it a, a mural in the classic uh, Northern Irish uh, political tradition. I mean, is he going to be, is, are the DUP going to be asking for more money? Uh, well, I can't see why they wouldn't. I mean, they've, they've basically got Boris over a barrel, haven't they? Um, and given what they got out of Theresa May, um, there's, you know, they need, he needs them more than they need him. They can walk away. He can't. Still, it isn't. It, I mean, if we think about just how long power sharing has not been taking place at Stormont, I mean, there are plenty of people you can blame for this, a succession of Northern Ireland secre secretaries, a succession of foreign secretaries and prime ministers as well, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I think the, 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 classic, the classic problem with the Northern Irish situation is that um, it, it actually comes down to health and safety in terms of farming products. If you drill down into the issues that are about the Irish border, you push down into the concerns. And what it is, is it's about the fact that you have sheep that cross the border mm -hmm. in, in farmers' fields. Um, but you also have, you may have imports coming in from the states, which the Irish are concerned about because they may not m meet the standards. So the obvious solution to this, I mean, even Ian Paisley Senior, the late Ian Paisley Senior, said, well, our people are British, but our, our cows, or I think our sheep are Irish. So there is a solution critically on that issue, which is the most sensitive issue, dates back to the uh, mad cow disease crisis and all of this. I think that's, that's actually the key issue. And I think with goodwill on the Irish side, which we don't yet see, this can be resolved. But I think, you know, right from the beginning, the backstop was a very, very clever political ploy, taking a real issue and, and magnifying it and making it much more um, politically toxic for the British government. I mean, Emma, take, take, us, take us to uh, The Sun's editorial, Get Real Leo. Uh, something that, that, that I've noticed, certainly over the course of this week, is the way in which uh, those who want to see us leave on the 31st of October really are directing their ire very specifically at Leo Varadkar and his involvement in the, 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 the state of the situation that we're in at the moment. I think there's an awful lot of hypocrisy going on at the moment because if the Irish papers were talking in this way about Boris Johnson, we would be going completely loopy about it. And we, you know, the, the, the venom we would be directing at those papers for saying that we're, that our Prime Minister is not acting statesmanlike for capitulating completely on the most key important issue that he has in these, in these talks. 
I mean, we just would, we would never stand for that. So why do we expect him on anybody else to? Mm. Uh, and of course, this uh, absolutely slap bang next to a piece by Trevor Kavanagh this morning, uh, referring to the backstop as a voodoo spell to bewitch and befuddle the feeble minded. I, mean, I thought this was a temporary arrangement what, that we had in place while we sought out a trade deal. Well, politically, I think that the suspicion is, is that it's intended to be a bridge, as Ollie Robbins, the former chief negotiator, said, to the future relationship. So it is quite clearly intended to keep at least Northern Ireland, if not the whole of the UK, in the customs union. That is, that is the reality. Um, of course, formally it is temporary, but of course you have, an, you have a, a situation where the EU or the Irish government can veto the UK leaving the customs union, which is absolutely foundational to the EU. But I, I just say I agree, this, this kind of talk is unhelpful. Also, Leo Varadkar and Simon Coveney, his foreign secretary, and they actually competed each other for, to be the, the Irish Taoiseach. So it's not just about Leo Varadkar, it's actually about all, almost all Irish politicians, and it's a much deeper issue in terms of you know, the Irish political psyche and, and obviously all the history that, that it pertains to that. These articles in The Sun are you know, not untypical of The Sun, but as Emma was saying, really not helpful. Um, well, let's have another look at the, uh, just, it's in fact, it's the piece that's actually underneath the uh, wonderful uh, car Steve Bell cartoon, page five. Um, Guy Verhofstadt is writing about EU unity uh, and their refusal to be intimidated. Well, I mean, why would the EU be intimidated given that, you know, the balance of power in these negotiations seems pretty clearly to have been weighted towards the European Union side from day one? I think he's responding to the bullishness that's coming out of the British government, the entire sort of narrative at the moment do or die, which Guy Verhofstadt very cleverly points out at the end of his article is actually a misquote of, a, of a, the classical poem, which when you consider how much of a classicist Boris thinks of himself as is quite a sort of in and twist from Guy Verhofstadt there. And he's pointing out that that poem, the, you know, the do or die, or do and die, as the poem mm. actually says, is about a British defeat. <laughs> you know, this is not something that we should be talking about as if it's the British winning spirit. It, just when we, when we hear from Boris Johnson and others that they're going back to Brussels, that they are going to try and get a new deal, I mean, to what extent do you think that's a useful fig leaf? Or do you actually believe that, that, that A, it's possible, B, it's what they want, and, uh, and C, they can actually do it? Well, it's certainly technically possible. I mean, there's politically possible and technically possible, and the, the two are sometimes related, but very often not. I think it's an essential, if it is a fig leaf, it's absolutely essential. It's the balancing act. You have to have the twin strategy and the EU have to believe it's not a bluff. They have to believe you will walk away, which is why what Nicola Sturgeon was saying is actually quite helpful in terms of she believes that Boris Johnson is intent on, on no deal. That actually paradoxically helps him in his negotiations with the EU. But also you have to be very, very clear, yes, we are willing to do a deal, but also the EU, not famous for its uh, democratic credentials, put it that way, has to recognize that the withdrawal uh, treaty, which it would be, was rejected three times, and the first rejection was the biggest rejection in, in recent parliamentary history. The EU has to recognize that. If it doesn't recognize that, then it's just actually showing, once again, that it doesn't really respect anything re resembling real democracy. Um, Ed, Emma, we will see you again next after more from the opinion pages, but for now, thanks very much indeed.